number two question, how many times a day you go number two? And and she was going like twice a week. So then now I'm getting closer to pay dirt. I know there's something going on. And it was an interesting kind of funny interview because the mother's there. And I said, look, you know, I haven't even done this evaluation and asked any questions about her brain function yet. Incidentally, I don't ask questions about appearances. All I do is ask questions about brain function. But so I told the parents, I said, look, it's the mother and the grandma. I said, this is kind of early in the interview. The mother's a nurse. I said, Mom, she's obviously got some bowel issues. I think she's got some immune issues. And this is going to be a really deep interview. Let me ask you a question. Uh, and we're kind of laughing about this number two question. I said, well, could you tell me how many times a day you go number two? Have you had any experiences with bowel problems? And she she kind of blushed a little bit, and we got into it. And she's, she's had IBS her whole life. Uh, she goes between constipation and diarrhea, and she's struggled with it her whole life. And, and so I'm saying, well, this is this is important. I said, now let's really do uh, an even more deep and thorough interview. Uh, Grams, why don't you tell us, and you know your turn is coming. She said, I could hear it coming. She said, oh, yeah, I've been there myself for years. Ever since I was a kid, I've had uh, unmanageable bowel problems. So you basically have three women in the room. One's eight years old, and then the others are... One's her mom and one's her grandmother. They all have significant bowel problems. And I said, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that she has gluten sensitivity or uh, milk sensitivity. Incidentally, as an aside, we're doing a lot of testing, which I'll tell you more about in just a moment. But we see even far more milk than we see wheat, oddly enough. We see so much milk. I don't know about your experience with that, Peter, but we see a lot of, a lot of milk issues. Um, uh, specifically IgG changes with, with milk, which we'll talk about in a second. But just to finish this story, so I was saying, look, I could be wrong. For me, it's kind of fun. I think it develops feedback loops for me to take a risk and guess, and then we can see whether I'm right or not. And it, it makes it a little more informal as opposed to we'll wait until the results are in, and then I will make a definitive decision, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So, um, So they come back, and I had what I did with them – because of the seriousness of the problems and everything, I sent uh, her. We did blood studies with the ELISA ACT biotechnologies with um, Russell Jaffe's. Oh, uh, I, I use it all the time. I'm very familiar with it. Yeah, extremely, great test. Extremely, extremely deep. It's an expensive test because it's not paid for by insurance. But I've interviewed Russell Jaffe on a, on a radio show that I had, and uh, he's he's a very interesting guy. And He's, you know, he's a, he's not a friend of mine, but it's close. We're we're colleagues, and we, you know, I really admire him. He has a great delivery, a great tongue-in-cheek delivery. And uh, but anyway, so uh, the tests come back, and uh, I, I was wrong. She had a very severe corn allergy, um, high fructose corn syrup, and interestingly, cane sugar. As you know, having run those tests with the Eliza Act with uh, Dr. Jaffe. Uh, sugar comes up quite frequently as a, as an immune dysfunction. Now, let me just tell you, your listeners who may, do, do your listeners know about that testing and how it works? Uh, many of them do. Mm -hmm. All right, so what happens is I, w I won't spend a lot of time, but you basically have the white cells that are tagged, chasing down the antigens, and and they collect around the antigens which are are there on the, on the testing apparatus. So. So I said, well, hey, I was wrong, but this is what's going on. It turned out the day that she freaked out and ran out of the house in her underwear, uh, she had had uh, Fritos, a bag of Fritos, corn chips, a um, high fructose corn drink, I think it was, uh, you know, Gatorade, not Gatorade, but um, uh, one of those uh, sweet sugary drinks, soft drinks. And then, in addition, she had a Snickers bar. So she had... Wow. <laughs> pure sugar. She had the high fructose corn syrup on the other thing, and she'd had the the actual corn, and she just completely went. She went psychotic. She basically freaked completely out. And this is the punchline. This is absolutely to me. It's it's a kind of a life changing event for a guy that had been. This is you know actually a while ago, but a life changing event for a practitioner who had been pretty much asleep at the switch on all this immune system dysregulation. And uh, she comes back in two weeks. The, the sore in her mouth is completely gone after having been there for months. Her color is better. And she's sitting in the chair. This is two weeks later. 
she's sitting in a chair and she's acting like she's 13. And she's, Dr. Parker, I don't know what you did, but I really feel a lot better. I want to thank you very much. You know, very calm, cool, and collected, demure through the whole thing. And uh, two weeks later, she's dramatically different. Yeah. Now, the natural question is that I keep her on the psych medications. Was it, was it with psych medications or without? She was still on the psych medications because I, what my experience has been we don't dramatically shift from one thing to another. But she's maintained her improvement, and we've gradually diminished the psych meds as we've gone along. She does suffer from attention deficit disorder, and, and uh, she has some other issues going. And But they've done well. We've done some pardon me, some supplements to help her gut heal, but it's, it's been a dramatic, and this is one of the, this is, we see this happen all the time, but I think this is a real dramatic one, a real dramatic piece of evidence um, that you can see. And as you know from reading the literature, and I'm sure, you know, because of, you know, your expertise and your, and your readership, they know that people can become quite psychotic on uh, immune system dysregulation be, can indeed become schizophrenic. I thought it was pretty interesting to me, having uh, read the literature, that the Annals of Internal Medicine, not the American Psych Journal of the American Psychiatric Association, but the Annals of Internal Medicine had a great report on a individual. I think it was in Denmark. I don't remember the uh, source of the report. I've, I blogged about it a couple of years ago. Um, in which an individual come in, they, they'd done a spec imaging, single photon emission computed tomography, the kind of brain imaging I do in D.C. And uh, they'd looked at her brain, and it looked like it had diffuse cortical hypoperfusion, uh, thought she had an immune dysfunction, got her tested, she was gluten sensitive, uh, found out she had, uh, furthermore, they actually did the whole biopsy and so on and discovered that she had, celiac and took her off of wheat and she was no longer schizophrenic. Now, 